Welcome to Rockingham for the 9th and 10th rounds in the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. With just six races to go, the season is bubbling up very nicely indeed. Before the racing got underway, that suckling was down in the paddock. Kevin Denwood from the uh, BMW Compact Cup. You had a pretty good season so far, about 12th in the championship. Yeah. Are you happy with your results so far? I am very happy so far. Um, I was hoping to be in the top 10 by now. Um, been struggling with the car with the setup this year, changing onto a fixed spring rating. But um, we're getting there, getting there. You've just been out for qualifying here at Rockingham. Uh, how, are you, how are you going so far? Um, I was quicker than what I was last year, which I'm happy with, but I believe I'm about 23rd. But uh, I was half a second quicker than last year, so I'm happy. And you're looking forward to this weekend. What kind of results you, will you be pleased with? Um, I normally start well, like, as you know, so hopefully get a couple on the start and then finish 12th, something like that will do me fine. Now you've been in BMWs for, for quite a few years. You just said to me as well, uh, a lot more strong competitors coming through the ranks. Yeah, a lot more. Well, I was one of the first started it with Paul Mack. Um, third year with him, a uh, lot younger drivers, a lot quicker, um, so we've got uh, us old boys have got to expect <laughs> to go backwards. It's great to see the championship still doing well. It is excellent and it, it's growing all the time isn't it, actually brilliant. Scott Lawson from the uh, BMW Compact Cup, this is your second season of racing, uh, how's it going this year? Uh, it's going quite well, uh, I've had an engine rebuild in the winter so uh, the, the car's a bit improved on last year and obviously I've got a little bit better with a bit more practice. <laughs> We can see on the car you've got the uh, Royal Air Force sponsorship. How's, how's that come about? Well, it's not strictly true. It's not sponsorship as such. I'm a member of the Royal Air Force, been with them 27 years. And although I advertise them through the car and the, uh, the ethos that they've got of promoting all uh, activities of adventurous nature, including motor sports and a lot of other things, you know, they believe that it, uh, it builds good courage, leadership and esprit de corps. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's a good advert, me touring around the country. Uh, displaying that this is the kind of thing that you can do as a member of the Royal Air Force. It's definitely, it's great to have them on board of course with your car, you working with them as well. Uh, you do a lot of work over the course of the day because you, you're washing the car, you're racing it, you're cleaning it, you're checking everything's okay. Is that hard work as well? Oh, it's definitely hard work, that's the hardest bit. I mean the, the, the racing is fantastic, it's really fun, it's a fantastic series. You know, anyone who wants to get into racing, come along, this is full grids and there's always somebody front to back, somebody to race against. But I'm a one-man band, I'm here on my own, and I do all my own pit crewing, and I do all, built the car myself, and did all, do, do all the work myself. But if you are stuck, there's always somebody here that will help you out. Good series. Well, once again here at Rockingham, the entry is such that it's had to be split into three groups, with each group racing twice during the course of the day. So this is the race for Group C versus Group A, first of all. It's Simon Roach taking his maiden pole position. Alongside him is Stuart Voice. The second row is Simon's brother, Neil, and David Drinkwater. The third row, Josh Harvey and Owen Hunt. The red lights go on, they go out, and the race gets underway. It's 13 minutes plus one lap. The distance here at Rockingham. We're on the International Super Sports Car Long Circuit this weekend, and an even start between the two front row men. So Simon Roach and Stuart Voice have both made a strong start. It looked like a good start as well by the number 47 car of Owen Hunter from the third row of the grid. We go on board with Josh Harvey, who started fifth on his way up to turn number two, which is Dean, the left-handed hairpin. That's Strasser Mackay, who's late on the brakes, locking up, running wide over the grass and probably losing a handful of places as well in doing so. We go back on board then with our pole position man, Simon Roach. He's already lost a place or two because Stuart Voice leads and David Drinkwater from the outside of the second row of the grid is up to P2 as they turn their way through Chapman for the first time. So Simon Roach qualified on pole position for this one. He was third fastest in the times this morning, the fastest of the Group C drivers therefore. Oh, and breaking late there is David Drinkwater. He locks up. Does that give Roach an opportunity? Not yet. It looks like Owen Hunter is there in fourth position. By far his best position in a compact cup race as we now go on board with Josh Harvey once again. Josh, who was on the podium last time out at Castle Coombe, his local circuit. We're keen to prove that that was no uh, local circuit fluke this weekend at Rockingham. Hunter having a look up the inside of Simon Roach there and he takes third place away. Now on board with Neil Roach, car number 81 as he makes his way out of Tarzan Hairpin. It looks like uh, Hunter couldn't get that move done on uh, Simon Roach and now it's going to be Neil who tries to go around the outside of Owen as they go through the Brook Chicane for the first time. This is towards the end of the first lap of the race. Onto the turn four banking they will go 
to complete the lap with Stuart Voice. You can just see in the distance, up in the lead of the race from David Drinkwater in second position. In third place, it's the 65 car of Simon Roach for the back. You can see there's a bit of a battle going on between number 57 and number 39. 39 is Roland Wilkinson trying to find his way past the 57 car of Mark Skeets, the Southampton-based driver. And Roland Wilkinson has done it on his debut in the Compact Cup. He goes up to sixth position, therefore. Round the Dean Hairpin they go then. Wilkinson has been a front runner in the MR2 Championship in the past. He was out yesterday sharing that car with his buddy James Cross, who used to race within the MR2 Championship. That was in the road sports race yesterday. A little bit of action going on further back, and the man capitalising there is the number 17 James Wynn Stanley car. But back to the leaders and Stuart Voice really pushing on through Piff Path. He's got David Drinkwater climbing all over the back of him there as they go through Kirby and Stuart Voice he drifts the car out of the corner and that has allowed David Drinkwater through into the lead of the race. So he started fourth, he now leads. Voice is down to second place. Simon Roach, who started on pole position, is still there in third as they make their way out of Gracelands down the straight towards Tarzan. This is for the second time of asking. So Drinkwater, then Voice, then Roach, then it's Hunter, Neil Roach, Josh Harvey completing the top six. Roller Wilkinson is seventh, and Mark Skeets is in eighth position. Don't forget, we've just got two thirds of the field in this race. We'll see the other third a little bit later on. Through Brookshire K once more. That's Neil Roach ahead of Owen Hunter and Josh Harvey, Hunter and Harvey. Good mates, spend a lot of time together in the paddock at these compact cup meetings. Both from the same part of the world, the West Country. Now David Drinkwater now has got through into the lead of the race, has got several car lengths in hand over Stuart Voice already. Drinkwater was a double winner, of course, at Donington Park early on in the season, but let's just focus on this battle for fourth position at the moment because it looked like Hunter was going to go through. Back, in fact, the fight for second place down towards Dean Hairpin. And down for, for fourth, it's Hunter very late on the brakes. If he was on the brakes at all, he went wide on the exit of the corner and he loses well, two places because of that. And Roland Wilkinson gets involved as well. There's someone else off too. That's the 16 car of uh, Eric Zaleski. He's had a spin down there with the Dean Hairpin and will rejoin. Now, oh, and there's two drivers that have hit, well, one of them has hit the wall. That, I think, is the... Gregory Barlow car, the yellow machine, that yes, he's taken quite a nasty whack into the wall at turn four. And there was another car just leaving into the scene. Now, I think that was the number 23 car of Andrew Cunningham, who was 38th in the championship last year, the production manager from Newbury. But yes, that's Greg Barlow, the company director from uh, Lancashire in his second season of racing. Doesn't look like Andrew Cunningham is going to get much further either. And yes, the red flags are out as well which is no great surprise, really, uh, given uh, that we've got a car in the wall uh, coming out of the Brookshire Cane in towards turn number four. Five-second board is raised. We're going to get a restarted race. It's a shortened race distance, six minutes plus one lap, and it's from a new grid. So it's David Drinkwater on pole position as the lights go out. Owen Hunter there is in third place at the moment, heading up towards turn number one. We're on board with Hunter now, as Voice and Drinkwater go wheel to wheel around turn number one, down towards Dean Hairpin for the first time. Hunter will try and find a gap on the inside, will he? Well, Drinkwater certainly has done. He's got his nose in front. Meanwhile, Simon has gone down the outside. Hunter locks up. I think just about avoids contact there. James Wynn Stanley goes wide in the practical performance car entered machine. Number 51 goes through, which is uh, Mark Skeggs in the second of those pale yellow cars. Towards Yentwood they go. In this uh, shortened, restarted race for the safety devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. And it's Drinkwater that leads the way then from Stuart Voice in second. So he's picked up where he left off. Simon Roach is there in third. It looks like Josh Harvey has made a good restart. He is fourth. Then Hunter and Neil Roach are continuing their battle. It's now for fifth and sixth, though. Ronald Wilkinson seventh and Stratton Mackay is in eighth place. And Mackay started the initial race in tenth. As far as the restart uh, grid was concerned, he was ninth after that uh, off at the first corner at Dean. Mackay a little bit out of shape there in the uh, car's liveried machine. 
And Tarzan Hairpin then for the first time in this restarted race. You can see uh, the Michael Gray car a little bit further back as well. Here's Owen Hunt that is behind Neil Roach now on the run up to Brook. And on the school straight they've gone. Ronald Wilkinson is heading the next group in number 39. And the orange car with the black roof. A number of different lines being taken by the drivers as they rejoin the banking. It is very much a circuit of two halves this at Rockingham with the fast run out of the Brook Chicane down towards the Dean Hairpin. You won't be braking, you shouldn't be lifting either through turn one if you want to be really quick. In the very tight and technical infield section, which is where they're heading to now. So Drinkwater pulling away, voice in second, Simon Roach third, Josh Harvey in fourth position. And they're going to get back to Neil Roach in fifth and Owen Hunter in sixth spot. We've got on board with Harvey now, car number six, the driver from Trowbridge. Did some races in the Castle Coombe. Formula Ford 1600 Championship last year but switching to tin tops for the first time this season. I was very pleased to be on the podium at Coombe at the last meeting three weeks ago. On to Kirby. Looks like Strush Mackay has made his way ahead of Roland Wilkinson now in the number 39 car. Ooh, someone going very wide there. It's number 45 right up against the, uh, the barriers there. That's uh, Brendan Murphy from Colchester so he loses a bit of time now Simon Roach is under pressure here he is there in the number 65 car he did have a podium finish at Brands Hatch earlier on in the season it was his first podium he's running in the podium positions now but Josh Harvey is putting quite a bit of pressure on him here it's the fight for third and fourth position then it's uh, Neil Roach fifth Owen Hunter in sixth Mackay 7th and Wilkinson 8th and there's quite a gap back to the ninth place car which I think is the 57 of uh, Mark Skeet, the used car dealer from Southampton. There though is Stratton Mackay with Wilkinson just behind him. Mackay who's had podium finishes in the past. There's the last lap board. Already into the closing stages of this restarted race. We're on board with David Drinkwater who's had a very strong race here got from fourth to first in the first couple of laps of the initial part of the race that gave him pole position for the restarts and he converted that into the early lead he locks up though a bit of a mistake there but it's not cost him a position Stuart Voice tucks in behind him in second place not one of the circuits that Stuart Voice really favours at Rocky last year I think this was into the run of victories for Steve Roberts last year who went on to take the championship of course Owen Hunter, the 2012 Sax Max champion, continues to push on. He's in a new car now, and uh, that seems to have elevated him somewhat up the order. I'm sure he'll be enjoying his racing a lot more as a result of that. Drink water and voice, first and second. They've pulled away somewhat from the rest of the field now. And was that Harvey in third place when they uh, just went through shot that time? Just saw a glimpse of the white car. We'll try and pick that up in a moment. Simon Roach that was leading the battle for third on to this final lap but uh, he's dropped down the order hasn't he so a mistake there by Simon Roach I think he was down to about fifth position possibly that would have been up at Dean Hairpin and so Josh Harvey up to third voice again the back of the car stepping out as he comes out of tyres and he's always spectacular to watch is Stuart voice so it's Josh Harvey third looks like Neil Roach fourth Simon Roach fifth and Owen Hunter sixth as they make their way down towards Brook for the final time top two go into the chicane Harvey, oh and now Neil Roach gets out of shape at Brook, oh and the car clattering over the kerbs, his brother Simon has to take to the grass in avoiding action, I think everyone has missed Neil there but the chequered flag goes out and it is waved to David Drinkwater, it's his third victory of the season but his first since the opening meeting of the year, Stuart Voice takes second place, Josh Harvey third, Simon Roach fourth, Owen Hunter fifth and Strasson Mackay sixth, Neil Roach has recovered and finishes in eighth place. And here's confirmation of that. David Drinkwater winning by just under two tenths of a second from Stuart Voice with Josh Harvey in third. Voice got the fastest lap though, but it wasn't better than the lap record set last year by Steve Roberts. David Drinkwater, winner of our first BMW Compact Cup race there. A cracking race for yourself. Red flag during part of it. What were you thinking then? Oh, when the red flag came out, I just thought, oh, that's it. We had a great start. I managed to nip inside a kneel and 
get alongside Stuart and get that get back and front. But yeah, when I come out, I thought, oh, I've got to do it all again. But I've got to thank everyone who's involved with TWG, Will and Graham. I've got Louis from Maha here. He's, uh, he's helped me loads. Um, Andy Chang, who's helped me a lot with the ATEC performance and Reef performance as well for everything they've done. It's been a long time since you're on the, the top step back at Donington Park back in March, but you've done well to get back here in Rockingham. Yeah, it's been it's been a long time. We had a good good start to the season and we struggled up brands and then we got back together again. You now Coombe, we had a couple of second places, but managed to actually get with Stuart today and he, you know, hassle him and get inside him and get away for that victory. Stuart, second place in that first race of the day for you. Uh, you tried to keep keep David right on his toes there, right towards the checker flag. Yeah, we did, but we. Uh... We were just suffering a little bit, but we uh, we managed to crawl it in and th at the end, but we just ran out of time doing it. But yeah, it was a very good race, had some good racing, so we had to think about it. The track's very slippery out there. Josh Harvey, third place in that first race. So you had a third place last time out at uh, Castle Coombe, so it's going pretty well for you at the minute. Uh, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, I was uh, I was hoping at the beginning of the season to have maybe a podium by the end of the year, so to have two already is, um, is spot on. Yeah. Quite an eventful race for you there, lots happening in front of you, which made you your way through, diving through, and lots happening behind as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was all going on in front of me. Um, I sort of played a bit of a waiting game, to be honest, at the very beginning, um, just to let it spread out. You know, sometimes you can make a few more places doing that. Um, obviously, we had the red flag, we restarted. Um, I got an OK start, it was a bit of a almost coming together in the first corner. Um, then I was, I was racing hard, um, I got past Owen, who was trying to get past somebody else. Um, and then I think it was a lap from the end, one lap from the end. Uh, I tried once on Simon into the hairpin, and I tried the second time and uh, made a little bit of a mistake and went wide, and that let me uh, nip through. Race two is for Group B against Group C. So it's Steve Roberts on pole, Simon Roach next to him, Alex Dew and Neil Roach on the second row of the grid. As the lights go out and we are off and running for the second of three races today in the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup here at Rockingham. And it's Roberts that's made a good start from pole position. Simon Roach a bit more sluggish off the line. And he sort of tucked in between uh, Alex Dew and Neil Roach there, the two second row men who made better starts than he did. You can see that uh, Josh Harvey and James Nut Brown are in the thick of the action as well as they arrive at Dean Hairpin for the first time. So they won't run particularly wide this time. I think everyone has just about stayed within the confines of the tarmac on this occasion. Mark Morton there towards the back of the field. You can spot him quite easily in his green car. Bit of a mistake there and he's lost uh, quite a bit of time. Yep, there's Kevin Denwood, who we heard from at the beginning of the programme, his blue and orange car right in the middle of the field. But look at this for the lead of the race, Alex Dew, who was a winner at Brands Hatch. He's piling the pressure onto Steve Roberts, who's looking for a return to form here after a disappointing couple of meetings at Snetterton and Castle Coombe. Last year's champion, of course, is Roberts, as we see the 88 car of James Nut Brown go through. So we've got the two uh, Harvey Garage cars running in this race together. As at the end of the first lap, it's Roberts leading the way from second place man Alex Dew. Third place is Simon Roach as they come up and over the line. In fourth place, it's the number 35 car of Mike Toby, who started back on the ninth row of the grid. That was a great start from Toby, sort of went unnoticed really. And there further back, you've got uh, the battle that involves the 81 car of Neil Roach and number six, which is Josh Harvey who finished on the podium in race number one, of course, but Harvey goes very deep into Dean Hairpin. It might work, though, as he carries more speed out of the corner, possibly. Uh, but no, he's still uh, tucked in behind Neil Roach, of course. His teammate, James Nut Brown, is there with him as well. Harvey has another bite at the cherry up at Yentwood. He's gone through because Neil Roach runs out wide there on the exit of the corner. So Josh Harvey goes up a position. He now is fifth. On yellow flag, someone has gone off. Uh, right into the gravel maybe, just out of the sight of our cameras. Meanwhile, Toby there is now up into third position. Well, what a start from him. He started ninth, now up to third in the space of a lap and a half. He's got the better of number 65, Simon Roach, who started on the front row then. So the Bristolian, who went well at Castle Coombe last time out, taking a third and fourth place finish on home tarmac. He's going well here at Rockingham as well, up into third position now let's see what he can do from there if he can make up six places within a lap and a half where could he stop 
along the school straight. So we've got Josh Harvey, Neil Roach and James Nutt-Brown. Uh, just behind that it looks like Jonathan Davis there in the 27 car, the car with the orange stripe down it. He's doing battle with number 17, James Wynn Stanley. That's over 8th and ninth position. It looks like Davis is going to go through. And yes, he does. As the cars go back onto the banking. So two laps now completed in this 13 minute plus one lap race. Right, if it goes the distance, we'll get uh, just about eight laps out of this, possibly nine. It's right on the borderline looking at the lap times. In the earlier race, the uh, fastest lap was a 149.64, which was about eight tenths of a second outside of last year's lap record set by Steve Roberts. Davis locks up, so does Win Stanley. They cancel one another out. And both continue to run in eighth and ninth positions. Davis, the 18-year-old from Market Deeping, 19 now in fact, I think he is, student in motorsport engineering, he's done some uh, Super 1 karting in the past. Here comes Steve Roberts, the pressure has been released slightly now, Alex Dew not quite as close to him as he was, but look here because we've got the uh, teammates back together again, Josh Harvey and James Nutt Brown on board with Steve Roberts and this is a sight that he'll be enjoying an absolutely clear track ahead of him as he turns through the left hander at Grayson just getting a wheel over the kerb on the exit of the corner down towards Tarzan onto the brakes he goes Nut Brown it is with the green roof Harvey with the orange roof Nut Brown having a look up the inside does he go through I think he does so a change there on lap number three of the race down to 6th place then goes Josh Harvey James Nutbrown goes up to 5th position and Neil Roach uh, he's lost a place every lap here, he's now down in 7th place the rest of the field making their way to the chicane, there is the uh, Scott Lawson car with the RAF livery on it of course but problems for one of the drivers it seems to me, that's Kevin Denwood so, oh and also a problem for Scott Lawson, it looked like he'd had a spin at Brook, but it looks like Kevin Denwood is bound for the pit lane. I think it was uh, Nigel Olive-Jones that we've lost a little bit earlier on in the race as well. Scott Lawson has lost some time. I think he's now right at the back of the field. 15. It's in the back step out there. That's uh, Gavin Tabor from DIS, a garage and van sales manager and some national hot rod racing and super rod racing in the past as, as Gavin so a driver making the switch from short ovals to the full circuits and he's running in that number 15 car in 11th position at the moment as uh, Harvey and Neil Roach get side by side and I fancy that the Jonathan Davis James Winstanley battle is catching them as well so it's going to be four cars now fighting over that position which is sixth so 6th, 7th, 8th and ninth, right together. Jonathan Davis fancied a bit of a look up the inside, but that didn't work. And now Neil Roach is very much out of shape there. Coming through Graceland's, can that give Win Stanley or Davis the opportunity to go through at Tarzan? No, I don't think it can. But certainly Harvey now is a, a couple more lengths up the road relative to Neil Roach. Brown also has made his break. Still a clear track for number 56, Steve Roberts, the chartered accountant. Formula Ford champion, but champion in the Compact Cup last season. His defence has hit the rocks a little bit over the last couple of meetings with success for Stuart Voice at Snetterton and at Castle Coombe. Voice leading the championship points coming into this meeting by 16 over Drinkwater, with Roberts a further nine points back in third place. So there is work to be done for Steve Roberts in the last six rounds of the championship. his way through Piff Pack up towards Kirby now you can see actually that uh, Dew seems to have closed back in on Roberts now it did sense uh, a couple of laps ago that the pressure had been released but uh, Alex Dew has turned the wick up once more in the LED Lenser backed car down the steel straight towards Graceland's once more only about uh, two car lengths between them if that as they head towards the right hand hairpin now at Tarzan Roberts due on top two in third place it is the number 35 car of Mike Tovey who 
as this race has gone on, hasn't made the progress that he did in the first lap or so. In fourth place is the 65 car of uh, Simon Roche. He finished in uh, fourth place in the earlier race that he took part in as well, so he's consistent if nothing else. In fifth place, we've got uh, number 88, which is James Nutt Brown. In sixth place, it's the number six car of Josh Harvey, and Neil Roach is seventh. And it's almost side by side for the lead of the race as the last lap board goes out. And yes, it is going to be an eight lap race, therefore. Dew trying to the left, trying to the right through turn number one. Plenty of space here at Rockingham on the oval part of the circuit. It gets a bit tighter as you go on to the infield. Roberts with a defensive line being taken down into Dean Hairpin. An opportunity neither for Dew to go to the right nor the left there sort of follows Roberts around he really probably needs the race leader in car number 56 to make a mistake but the man from Bampton in Oxfordshire the automotive and motorsport training professional is just not relenting here he's keeping piling the pressure on hoping that Roberts will make a mistake but he didn't make many of them doesn't Steve Roberts certainly did towards the end of last season when he had an incredible run of victories We'll be hoping for something similar to round off this season. Only two more meetings to go in the championship after this, though. Time is running out for him to overhaul David Drinkwater and Stuart Voice, maybe. Down towards Tarzan. Dew is stuck like glue to the back of Steve Roberts' bonnet, uh, bo uh, bootlid, I should say. But he's not been able to, uh, to make it through. I don't think he is now. He's that's a length or so further back than he was at the beginning of the lap. So in third place, you can see Toby still has Simon Roach putting a bit of pressure on him. Through Brookshire Kane onto the banking for the final time. Then and there's Toby and Roach third and fourth. As close for that position as they are for the lead, and they're almost overlapping for the lead now as they come up to the line. Dew is throwing everything out at his footage to the floor but it isn't quite enough and Steve Roberts takes victory in his first race of the day by just under two tenths of a second oh and look at this further back it's just going to be Josh Harvey fending off Neil Roach and James Wynn Stanley got ahead of uh, Jonathan Davis uh, two or three laps from the end as well so that was for seventh position eighth position I should say up to the line now comes the tenth place man which is number 15 uh, Gavin Tabor ahead of Bryce Greenwood and Mark Skeets and Simon Wood. 18 one hundredths between Steve Roberts and Alex Dew at the end of the race. Mike Tovey, a creditable third, having started on row five of the grid. The fastest lap went to Alex Dew, but again, not beating the Steve Roberts lap record. Steve Roberts, uh, victory there in the BMW Compact Cup, your third of the year, but Alex Dew kept you honest all the way. Yeah, Alex pushed me all the way. It's pretty much a repeat of Brands, but without the rain. Um, but no, it was, it was a cracking race. Um, I'd like to have pulled away, and I thought I was going to halfway through, but uh, no, Alex kept me very honest, and uh, it was a close finish right there at the end. Not as many wins for you this year so far, but it just shows the strength of the championship. Yeah, it's really competitive this year. Lots of people can win races, which is the way it should be. Um, the, the second race is going to be very, well, the third race of the day, but my second race is going to be very interesting because there's a lot of people in that that can win. I've just got to say a big thank you to my sponsors, Trade Price, Price Cars Essex uh, PRG Trailers and Euro Motor Parts for, for getting me here. Alex Dew finishing there in second place just behind Steve Roberts, but you gave him a great run for his money. Yeah, uh, yeah. once again, finished behind Steve, uh, although I think another lap, to be honest with you, I could have maybe had him into the bottom uh, hairpin down there. It was it was a sort of a, quite a tactical race, really. I sort of used the tyres at the beginning not too hard, trying to straighten the corners off as much as I could. Um, but ultimately, it wasn't enough towards the end, so I had to settle for second place. Mike Tovey came home there in uh, third place. Another good uh, top five finish for you there. How do you see the race? Uh, yeah, delighted with the finish, considering uh, a disgraceful qualifier this morning. Uh, 14th overall in the end, I think it was. Uh, the ABC grids helped us out. Um, but with these races, it's all about a good start. Managed to get a good start up until, uh, I think, fourth on lap one. And that just set the race up then. Well, the final race of the day is coming up after the break. And it should be one to watch, because the top four drivers in the championship are all taking part in it. Join us in a moment.
safety devices, Gas Sharks Compact Cup Championship leader Stuart Voice lines up on pole position. Alongside him is the defending champion Steve Roberts. David Drinkwater and Alex Dew are on the second row, but the lights go out. Away we go. A great start there by Steve Roberts from second on the grid, already ahead of Stuart Voice. Another fantastic getaway from Owen Hunter as well. He's made some very good starts today. Down the inside of David Drinkwater he goes, trying to get through into third position, but Drinkwater was sticking alongside him around the outside as they go down towards Dean Hairpin for the first time. On board with Drinkwater here. Do they all make it through? Very busy circuit indeed. There's Declan McDonnell with a day glow livery on his car. Number 42 as well towards the back is Mark Cornell from Dis. But it's Roberts in the lead. Voice in second. Drinkwater is in third position, the winner of our first race of the day. Voice is piling the pressure on Steve Roberts though. Voice, who was the man to beat at Snetterton and at Castle Coombe in the last two meetings. 393 championship points coming into this weekend. Drinkwater 377, Roberts 368, Dew 351. And Dew is the man who's a little bit further back down the order already. He's been shuffled back a little bit on this opening lap of the race. Very congested circuit though as we're on board with Roberts and again it's the view that he's had all through race number one. I hope be hoping he has it all the way through race two as well. Clear track in front of him, but it's far from a clear track behind him because there's voice and drink water and then Hunter and uh, Nut Brown I can see in the white car with the green roof. Mark Morton in the bright green car is well up in number 26. So he'll be happy with uh, how this one's going after his uh, disappointing result in race one. He did get back up to 16th, 17th position though in the end in his first race. Onto the banking and it is Roberts, Voice and Drinkwater uh, coming through at the end of the first lap. Owen Hunter is in fourth place. James Nutbrown is in fifth. In sixth place it's the number three car of Alex G. So he's lost two places on the opening lap. Uh, seventh is number 24 Richard Miles. In eighth place is number 39 Roland Wilkinson. But let's focus on the lead, two leaders for the moment. Stuart Voice and Steve Roberts and David Drinkwater. Let's have a look down the inside of Stuart Voice there. Can he get second position away? We can't see where Voice is at the moment. Where is he? Can't see him to the side of us as Drinkwater made that stick. I rather think he might have done. Yes, he has. So good move there by Drinkwater down at Dean Heaven, but Voice fights back. Really clattering the curb on the apex of the corner at Yentwood, trying to find a way to squeeze through, but he couldn't. So it's Drinkwater in second, and just look how that's given Steve Roberts a bit of breathing space in the lead of the race as well. Down towards Kirby they go. Big grid of more than 20 cars. The E36 compacts that were manufactured from 1994 to 2001. Oh, there's a bit of contact there with the 1.9 litre 16 valve engine. There's a control ECU provided by Superchips. They run gas shocks and. Marangoni Tice, it's a standard gearbox in these cars as well. And this is the 10th round of a 14 round season, which will conclude at Silverstone and at Donington Park towards the end of the year. As Owen Hunter there in fourth place has got the world and his wife queuing up behind him. Uh, James Nut Brown and Alex Dew there in fifth and sixth positions. You can see there uh, Roland Wilkinson in there as well. And number 18, Struston Mackay, is involved once more as well. Mackay and uh, Wilkinson renewing their battle from earlier on. McDonnell a bit further back down the order than we've seen him before. I'm feeling it, uh, it's a relatively rare up drive at this circuit for uh, Declan McDonnell. He certainly won't have driven it for a few years, possibly as far back as his mighty mini days, which is quite some time ago now. Onto the third lap then, and James Nutt Brown trying to make a move on Owen Hunt here around the outside, down towards the Dean Hairpin. Hunter locks up, he'll go deep into the corner. Can Nutt Brown get him on the cutback? I think he might. Nutt Brown has gone through, Alex Dew is going to try and follow. Hunter will defend though. Dew slots in behind him, then Mackay, then Wilkinson. So Nutt Brown now has gone up to fourth position on this, the third lap of the race. Out of Chapman through Piff Path and up towards the left hander at Kirby. I think Drinkwater might have caught Steve Roberts again. Roberts early on had made a little bit of a break. So it's three for the lead. Then a big group of cars for fourth position. Five of them, in fact. 
fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh and eighth right together then. The ninth place car is number 35, which is uh, Mike Tovey, who's not made the impression in this race that he did in the earlier one. He went from uh, ninth to third. He started tenth on the grid for this one, but he's only made up one position here so far. Mackay has now got ahead of Alex Dew. Looks like Ronald Wilkinson might try to have a go as well. I think Mackay might have lost out again, in fact. Down towards the Dean Hairpin. So you've got Wilkinson and Dew and Tovey uh, alongside one another there. So Tovey just starting to make up a little bit more ground now as this race goes on. Very busy part of the circuit at Yentwood. Look at Wilkinson sliding wide. He's onto the grass. And I think he's possibly into the gravel trap there. There's a puff of dust as if he'd gone off into the gravel. And Roland Wilkinson might not be able to get out of that one. Yes, it is. does look like he is stuck down there. So he is our first retirement from the race. We had one non-starter with car trouble. That was Kevin Denwood. We saw him have problems in race number one. This goes on though, and just, uh, up the road there is the number 27 car of Jonathan Davis. Last lap board goes out for Steve Roberts, with Drinkwater in behind him, but not too close. I think Roberts will be fairly comfortable with this position going on to the eighth and final lap. Drinkwater, the winner of race one. Roberts, the winner of race two. Something's got to give, hasn't it? And uh, we had Drinkwater, a double winner at Donington. Steve Roberts in the 56 car had two successes at Brands Hatch. Uh, and since then we've had uh, Stuart Voice. He had success at uh, Snetterton in both races and the same at Castle Coombe. So can Roberts become the second double winner? Uh, or the second double double winner, I should say, of the season after Stuart Voice. We've had five meetings and a double winner at each of them. At some of the meetings we've had three races and some just two though, depending on the maximum grid size of each circuit. Still getting very big grids in this uh, safety devices, gas shocks, compact cup. It's been really one of the success stories of British club motor racing over the last two or three years. Getting excellent grids at 750 Most Club organised racing events. Attracting a number of drivers in from other disciplines like Steve Roberts and Alex Dew. We've raced Formula Ford and Renault Clios in the past. David Drinkwater dabbled in stock catches a decade ago. Up towards Brookshire Kane for the final time then, and as I thought might be the case, Steve Roberts has held on. Just one more turn to go really, then it's the sprint to the line. Drinkwater trying to get the undercut here, but we go on board in the inset with Steve Roberts. Up towards the line, up to the chequered flag and he's a very happy man indeed as the flag goes out he takes the win this time by the relatively comfortable margin of three tenths of a second Stuart Voice took third position there's Michael Gray who's had a very quiet race the ex uh, Scottish Formula 4 1600 racer the driver from Edinburgh and he's going to come across the line in 14th position he was a driver much further up the order towards the early part of the season and there's Andrew Cunningham. We saw he was involved in that race one incident, which brought out the red flags. Good to see him back out again. And indeed, the 50 car of Gregory Barlow as well. That has been somehow patched up. He's back out on track. And Barlow finishes just up the road from Cunningham, actual fat, in the 18th and 19th position. But there's the confirmation of the top six finishers. Roberts getting the win, 28 one hundredths of a second. As far as the fastest lap was concerned, well, that went to Stuart Voice. But still, Roberts' lap record is intact. Steve Roberts, uh, double win today in the BMW Compact Cup. That one was the hardest of the day, though, with two very hard charges on your tail. Yeah, I mean, the first one was hard with Alex as well. Um, but, yeah, David, well, both Stu and David gave me very honest in that one in the fact that I don't think I really had the pace, but luckily there was the three of us and it would kind of ebb and flow because 
second and third of battle and I'll be able to get away a bit but I mean David was so strong on the brakes into the first corner he'd just gain all his time back there but luckily there's parts of the track in the infield where I could gain a little bit so it was, it was just ebbing and flowing and then that last lap it was just about making no mistakes but I've got to thank all my sponsors and I've got to thank my brother for all the effort he puts in with my racing and Andy from AW Track Sport as well does a fantastic job uh, yeah really good weekend. David Drinkwater second place there and you're in a, a midst of a great little battle. Yeah, it was a mag magnificent battle, I think. I think the three of us made a nice break and it was just full on all the time. It was no let up. I think I made Steve work for it today. Ho hopefully he thought I did because um, I was pushing and pushing and pushing. Likewise with Stuart, you know, both of them got a good start. I think three of us got a good start and you know, in, into the, I think it was into the first hairpin. It was uh, just managed to get inside, inside of Stuart. But I've got to thank everybody for helping me out in the car. TWG, Will and Graham, they've been awesome. Louis from Maha always helps me with the car. And I've got Andy Chang and um, Reef Performance. Everyone to thank, really. Stuart Voice, third place in that race there. A podium from earlier on. It's about keeping up the points now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's about keeping up the points. We had a good race. Like Steve was out in front. We had a battle at the start we did. And uh, Drinkwater, he got past me through the uh, just before the second corner. And uh, we battled it all the way through. I had a very strong car at the start. But it sort of uh, went off like mid, mid uh, race to end it did. But we had a good battle and it's good points. Time for the summer break now in the Compact Cup. We'll join the action again at Silverstone. Goodbye for now.